Hello everyone, my name is Chishnu Rajesh and in this video I will be talking about Fourier descriptors. In image processing, features or shapes in an image are conveyed using particular parameters called descriptors. Boundary descriptor is such a class of parameter that are used to describe or some cases approximate the boundaries of objects in an image. In this presentation, we will be talking about a particular boundary descriptor technique called Fourier descriptors. Before talking about Fourier descriptors, let's talk about what are boundary descriptors. An object or shape in an image can be represented in two ways. They can be either represented using its external characteristics or specifically the boundary of the shape or using their internal features or the pixels in that particular region. Boundary descriptors is a technique where we approximate or describe the shape of an object using the boundary of the object. One simplest example of a boundary descriptor is the length of boundary. Some common examples of boundary descriptors are eccentricity of the boundary curve. Eccentricity is the ratio of its principal axis of that particular shape, shape number, Fourier descriptors, statistical moment, etc. What are Fourier descriptors? Fourier descriptors are one way to represent the boundary information of an object or shape in an image. In Fourier descriptor, you find the Fourier transform coefficients of the boundary points of the object. We know that by sampling the boundary of a shape, we will we'll obtain a set of points and each such point can be represented using a pair of x and y coordinates in Cartesian coordinate system. This pair of x and y coordinates can be now converted into a 1D problem by making this xy coordinate into a complex number s where s is equal to x plus iy. The Fourier descriptor of this particular boundary will be the Fourier transform coefficients of this set of complex points. How do we implement this? To do this, first in the image, we will take the samples, we will sample the boundary of the image and we will we'll get a set of points on the boundary that are obtained at fixed intervals. Now each of these points will be represented by a pair of x and y coordinates in the Cartesian coordinate system. This 2D problem now can be converted into a one dimensional problem by representing each of these points or pixels by a complex number s of k where s of k is equal to xk plus iyk where xk and yk are the coordinates of kth point on the boundary. Now we have obtained this set of complex numbers. To calculate the Fourier descriptors, we find the Fourier transform of this set of complex points and thus we obtain A of u where A of u is the set of Fourier descriptors. Since there are k points on the boundary, we will obtain k Fourier descriptors. We can re-obtain the image from this set of Fourier descriptors by calculating the inverse Fourier transform of the Fourier descriptors. Let's say we are calculating the inverse Fourier transform of this Fourier descriptors using p points. If p is equal to k, then we will obtain the exact same in boundary that we used to calculate the Fourier descriptors. However, when we use p which is less than k, we will get an approximate boundary of the initial image. This is because Fourier descriptors represent the frequency information of the boundary. When we consider fewer Fourier descriptors, essentially we are considering low frequency components and ignoring the higher frequency components. Thus by using the low frequency components, we are obtaining an approximate shape of the initial image. Now let's talk about the properties of Fourier descriptors. In, when we First let's talk about rotation. In a complex plane, a complex number can be rotated by multiplying it by a factor e power j theta, where theta is the angle by which it is to be rotated. Since e power j theta is independent of k, it is considered as a scalar or a constant. Therefore, for a transform of e power j theta times s of k is equivalent to e power j theta times the for a transform of s of k. Thus, multiplying the complex numbers by a factor e power j theta is equivalent to multiplying the Fourier descriptors by the same factor in the frequency domain. 
Next is translation. A complex point can be translated by subtracting another complex point from it. So the set of complex point S of K can be translated by a distance X bar Y bar by subtracting a complex number S bar which is equal to X bar plus I Y bar from this set of complex points. When we calculate the translated set of points, when we calculate the Fourier transform of this translated set of points, it is equivalent to Fourier transform of S of K plus S bar times a summation which is shown here which is equal to summation k is equal to 0 to k minus 1 e power minus j 2 pi by k k u. This summation is equal to k minus 1 when k small k is equal to 0 and 0 when k not equal to 0. Thus in frequency domain we obtain a DC component whose value is equal to s bar times k minus 1. This only affects the first Fourier descriptor or a of u a of 0 where u is equal to 0. Next in scaling. In scaling just like rotation we multiply the complex number by a factor alpha. Since alpha is independent of k Fourier transform of alpha times s of k is equal to alpha times Fourier transform of s of k or alpha times a of u. Thus multiplying a scalar in the complex domain is equivalent to multiplying it in frequency domain. For a Fourier descriptor or any such boundary descriptor to be considered effective, it is said to have set of invariances such as translational invariance, rotational invariance and scaling invariance. This means that no matter how much you translate or rotate or scale the boundary, the Fourier descriptors or the boundary descriptors of that particular image will remain unique or constant. How do we achieve these invariances? First let's talk about translation invariance. We know that when we perform translation in frequency domain it is equivalent to adding a DC component or it adds a constant value to the first Fourier descriptor. To remove the effect of this DC component we can truncate the first Fourier descriptor or A of 0. Next is rotational invariance. To perform rotation we know that we multiply the set of points by a factor e power j theta. Since the modulus or absolute value of e power j theta is 1, the resultant rotational invariance can be obtained by considering the absolute value of the Fourier descriptors. Scaling invariance. In scaling, we multiply the complex points by a scalar value alpha. To remove the effect of alpha, we can divide the set of Fourier descriptors by one Fourier descriptor. For this purpose, we consider a of 1. We are not considering a of 0 because a of 0 is affected by translation. Thus, to get a completely invariant set of Fourier descriptors, we truncate the first two Fourier descriptors. We take the absolute value of the Fourier descriptors and divide them by the absolute value of the second Fourier descriptors. This is the result or observations of performing a simulation of Fourier descriptors in MATLAB. To perform this simulation, we consider a black and white image of a chromosome as input. By using BW binaries function, we are able to obtain the boundary points of this particular chromosome shapes, which is seen in the second image. We calculate the Fourier transform of this boundary points and the Fourier descriptors are obtained. Now, the image is recreated from this Fourier descriptors by considering a particular number of Fourier descriptors. Here there are five images. In the first image we consider 4.3 percentage of the initial Fourier descriptors. Second we consider 3.4. Third we consider 2.6. Next we consider 1.7 and finally in the last image we can see that we have only considered 0.8726 percentage of the initial set of Fourier descriptors. Still the image vaguely resembles the initial image and it is an approximation. The image uh, in this set of image, the Fourier descriptors are taken in such a way that they are completely invariant. They are translational, rotational and scaling invariant by truncating first two elements and dividing the set of Fourier coefficients by the second Fourier descriptors. Thus the result of this simulation can be summarized as 
the boundary of the image can be recovered from the set of Fourier descriptors by calculating inverse Fourier transform of the Fourier descriptors. The boundary can be approximated using fewer points by considering only low frequency components of the Fourier descriptors. Since MATLAB calculates Fourier, Fourier coefficients in a different way in order to effectively obtain the image back from the Fourier descriptors, it is necessary to center the frequency components before considering fewer number of points. The descriptors are made invariant by truncating first two Fourier descriptors and then dividing the entire set of Fourier descriptors by the absolute value of the second component. These are the resources that I have used to perform this presentation. Thank you so much.